we don't you need gold we do need silver every iphone you know has silver every solar panel has some silver every car has some silver so um <laughs> Uh, people will be surprised when this market changes, uh, will change and, and when the manipulation will break. I, I've, I've seen it before. I was in the market uh, very active as a private speculator in 2010, 2011, when we ran from $10 to $50 in, in less than, than two years. So when silver runs, it, it, run, it will run fast and people will be very surprised. Willem Middelkoop is the founder and chairman of the Commodity Discovery Fund, a Dutch investment fund that specializes in investing in exploration companies involved in major mineral or metal discoveries in several countries around the world. The fund invests mainly in discoveries of monetary metals like gold, silver and platinum and industrial metals like copper, nickel, zinc and lithium which are quite essential in the struggle to transition to renewable energy. Willem, a writer, journalist, and entrepreneur, has revealed the metals he is most bullish on as the metal markets move closer toward the next bull market. One of those metals is silver. According to the 61-year-old entrepreneur, silver's role as an industrial metal is often overlooked, and many people only categorize it as a precious metal. However, Willem is certain that is about to change. He explains that the drive toward renewable energy forms will mean increased demand for silver, a metal whose supply has been on the decline for years. Willem believes the imbalance between demand and supply will cause a massive shock that will break through all the price manipulation and see silver put in a massive rally that will surprise us all. Willem is also bullish on copper and uranium, which will be important in the global transition toward clean forms of energy and away from fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. Outside silver, copper, and uranium, Willem is also very bullish on gold, lithium, and other battery metals, and quite bearish on the global economy, which he maintains is heading for widespread recession and general economic decline. We will now bring you clips from Willem's recent interview with Commodity Culture. Ensure you watch the video to the end, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel for more videos on gold, silver, and other metals and commodities. Thanks and enjoy the video. So then you need some um, precious metals related investments uh, as a hedge. That, that's our opinion. So about 50% of our investment is precious metals related, but we like silver more than gold, but there are very few good silver stories out there. There are very few silver discoveries out there. I think we're in for revaluation of the whole precious metal space. Uh, even central bankers are talking revaluation now because they need some support for their uh, balance sheets. Of course, most central banks have gold on their balance sheet. We see uh, central banks very active and accumulating physical gold for their balance sheets, and that's that's the sign. So we always tend to have 50% of our exposure to the precious metal space, and uh, we do that through the best discoveries uh, worldwide. Well, that's why silver is so interesting. If you look at supply and demand fundamentals, actually since the 1970s, we have seen production deficits in the markets. And um, you had all these old silver coins from the 50s and 60s, and we used that to fill the gap. But I think um, shortages, physical shortage, shortages in silver could happen, especially because silver is used as a commodity for the industry. 60% of all silver is being used, especially in Asia, for electronics and everything. Um, um, so. Um, there's quite some stress developing in silver markets. You see premiums in, for silver in Asia. Uh, and if you look at the supply and demand outlook for the next 10 to 20 years, there are hardly any new silver discoveries. Actually, there are hardly any real silver listed companies because even companies like Majestic Silver are half gold uh, exposed now instead to silver. So it's a very small market. And I'm of the opinion that the silver and gold prices are manipulated, have been manipulated lower for quite some time. And once this paper selling stops, once this system breaks, like we've seen in the late 1960s when the London gold pool collapsed, there was, there was an effort by central bankers to keep the gold price fixed at $35 an ounce. You could say there's there's some uh, management now to keep silver locked at twenty twenty five dollars once that system breaks and fails because the physical demand is is too large you'll see a big run towards one hundred dollar 
uh, can happen even in a few months or in a few weeks. I think we've got to be in this market to win this market. Um, but we play this with uh, just 10, 15 percent of our fund goals. We do need silver. Every iPhone, you know, has silver. Every solar panel has some silver. Every car has some silver. So um, <laughs> people will be surprised when this market changes, uh, will change and, and when the manipulation will break. I, I've, I've seen it before. I was in the market uh, very active as a private speculator in 2010, 2011, when we ran from $10 to $50 in, in less than, than two years. So when silver runs, it, it, run, it will run fast and people will be very surprised. Copper equities make up the second largest part of the Commodity Discovery Fund's portfolio after gold equities. During the interview, Willem also talks about copper, which like silver is experiencing a massive shortfall in supply with ever-increasing demand. Willem describes copper as an important battery metal with quite a lot of interesting opportunities for investors. He also talks about uranium, which recently hit its highest level in 12 highs and is up by over 20% year to date. Forecasts continue to grow even rosier for uranium and investors are getting more pumped. In addition, Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, the world's largest and only publicly listed physical uranium fund, has been on a buying spree. In the last two years, the fund has more than doubled its uranium supply to nearly 62 million pounds. It also recently announced an at the market offering, which will allow it to issue up to $125 million in trust units to acquire even more physical uranium, putting even more pressure on the yellow cakes price. Let's get back to Willem's interview. When people talk battery metals, they always talk uh, cobalt and they talk lithium, but they always forget, you know, it's mainly copper. Uh, copper is the big market uh, out there. And when you look at supply and demand, especially after 25, there are deficits coming. And even the CEO of Glencore, which is a huge trader in copper and also copper producer, they said they won't start any new uh, mines, copper mines, before the prices are much higher. So the industry experts, they tell you copper price will be much higher. And now copper prices are still quite soft because we have this uh, economic uh, downturn worldwide because the rates are, uh, are, are getting jacked up. But once this market uh, changes, I think copper will start to fly again. And that's why we have some 25% of our investments is copper related. Uh, copper is uh, very important. It's also for China. So China is looking to buy all big projects which are still undeveloped in Latin America. We have some huge investments in companies like Solgold and we have these huge undeveloped copper mines. And I think uh, China's uh, We'll scoop them all up uh, when they're allowed to do that. If you look at the, the past uh, boom market, which is, well, some 15, 16 years ago, there were some uh, incidents with a few of the mines, a few of the larger mines, and uh, everybody was afraid of uh, uranium shortages. But what we have now um, is, is a whole new market. Um, currently, worldwide, we see less than 400 nuclear, um, uh, nuclear energy stations operating. And, and uh, there are about 400 to be built in the next, uh, well, 5, 10 to 15 years. Uh, even the Middle East countries who have a lot of um, uh, oil, you know, even countries like Saudi Arabia and the, uh, and the Arab Emirates is starting to build nuclear uh, reactors. So this is for real. Um, and if you look at supply and demand, uh, it, it's a very small market. And it's really hard for uranium to keep up with demand. There will be production deficits in a few years. Uh, actually, we'll see production deficits in many um, metals, uh, over, uh, especially um, uh, f looking from 2025 20, onwards. Uh, but uranium is, 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 is a special case. And um, I think it will be very hard to uh, really jack up the production worldwide of uranium. It's a very complicated market. Um, it comes from uh, Niger and Kazakhstan, you know, these are not the most reliable countries from a Western point of view. Uh, of course, there was this huge discovery by Next Gen Energy. Uh, we've been invested with that one for six, seven years now. And, and once they um, will start production, that could be 20% of world uranium production. Um, um, but that, that's also a few years out. So. I think this is a very serious new bull market. Uh, it will have some legs. It, it could take uh, actually decades uh, to, to, to develop. So I'm not surprised that everything is jumping now because 
we are jumping from a very low base 